Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you are doing well. Coming to you live, actually, actually from the heart of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm at my friend's place, and so I'm not streaming from my normal setup tonight. And uh, and I'm sorry that we're starting so late, but I'm glad to be on the stream with you today. I know that um, some of you guys were actually in some bad weather situations, so I'm praying that uh, your friends and family are all safe. There were some tornado uh, activity today, and bad weather, and lots of hail and wind, and all of that stuff. And so. Um, Hopefully you are safe. And again, sorry we're streaming so late tonight, but really looking forward to being able to cover um, more of what's going on in this Sean Diddy Combs case. In fact, shocking today development. Federal investigators went, obviously we saw that with full tactical gear, um, and they're captured on Diddy's home surveillance video recording uh, what was once being able to be described as a luxurious mansion of his, the footage uh, which was revealed by Missa Hilton, Combs' ex-mother to two, uh, Combs' ex and mother to two of his children, showcases the moment when authorities actually served the search warrants, which led to the escort of his sons. You guys remember that coming out with their hands on top of their head, handcuffed, totally heavily armed. Um, and amidst the controversy, high-profile attorney Jeffrey Lickman, which is known for his representing figures such as El Chapo, you guys know that? El Chapo, the whole story there, and John Gotti, that is who his sons have retained to defend him. This, it's a mob attorney. The same attorney covered El Chapo, same attorney covered John Gotti. That who is who did his sons have. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just calling it it is what it is. Uh, tell me if you guys think that that's a bad sign. Put a one in the chat if you're like, hmm, that's interesting. New development. That's an interesting development. His son's hired his son's hired mob attorneys. Hmm. That could be very interesting. Let me put it on the screen just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, it was a news uh, that Fox News actually released um, today. Sean Diddy Combs hires mob lawyers as mother's blasts fed releasing videos of the mansion raid. I hate when they have commercials. I even have an ad blocker on, but yet still it knows its way around. Three, two, one, done. Take down with Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. So now we have two people come out saying that Diddy was talking to the feds do you think that's true whether it's true or not and he might have been cooperative in some way shape or form you don't get away with human trafficking unless you give up john Gotti or something like that and that's not what happened here i can tell you jesse this that this investigation has been going on for a long time very closely held by hsi so much so that even some of the agents on the raid a week ago today, didn't know whose house they were raiding until they got there. That's how closely held this wow, investigation. Wow, because there could have been a tip. Absolutely. And there are allegations that he was paying law enforcement through his chief of security, which also happened to be Michael Jackson's chief of security. I don't know if I buy into that. You know, people... Inter to me, what they're talking about is very interesting. What they just said to me is extremely interesting. You had Diddy paying the law enforcement in Los Angeles, not surprised there. They're gonna give them a tip. Uh, they didn't even tell the HSI who they actually were investigating. Incredibly interesting there. All of it, all of this, very peculiar, very interesting to me. Um, and this other guy said that they've been investigating him for a very long time, a very long time. So that means You know, that this wasn't just based on that civil lawsuit that was put out there in the Southern District of New York, that, that this is an investigation that's been going on for a long time. So I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that uh, Diddy's guilty based on what we know as of today? Put a one in the chat. Or do you think we don't know enough information? We need to chill out. Put a two in the chat. Um, and by the way, 
as you're doing that, I want to let you know that we are totally crowdfunded on this channel, which means we depend on amazing people like you uh, to support us financially. So I just want to extend the invitation for those of you who want to come alongside in that way. You can support through PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. That information is down on the bottom of the screen. You can also support through Super Sticker or Super Chat like Cat Joy. Thank you, Cat Joy. Amy Heights. Thank you, Jennifer Swain. You are amazing. Preboarding in progress. Thank you for that alert to the crowd. Patty DeVilla, thank you. And 911 operator, appreciate your support. Deb Wakefield, congratulations. You've been with us for 24 months. You say you're having problems leaving messages. We can see that one. So at least that one's coming through. It's good to see you on the stream. Lots of people saying they think he's guilty, at least based on what we know to be true. People in Diddy's situation like to have those involved in law enforcement close to them. But that doesn't mean they're taking payoffs. That doesn't mean they're doing big favors. They like that closeness. It's just like how Diddy was able to court Diageo or Estee Lauder. He was very successful in doing that, and that made him a lot of money and gave him credibility outside the hip-hop rap world. And that's what he was trying to do here, a lot like what Epstein did with very powerful political and business. And if you look at this report in the New York Post, you see it's a constellation oh, of billionaires he's involved Very in. similar to what Epstein was doing. And, you know, these guys get drunk with power, allegedly. You know, Diddy has said that these allegations are false, but they get drunk with power, and all of a sudden they lose their, their balance. And what's right and what's wrong? And they're insulated, and they've got everybody telling them they're great. And all of a sudden, these civil suits come out. And the feds watch this. That's what happened with R. Kelly. It started with civil suits. Then HSI got involved. And, and they're the lead agency for Yeah, it's, these civil suits are just like a silver platter for the feds very helpful, to very helpful. take these guys down. All right, well, we'll see how this plays out. Chris Hansen, take down with Chris Hansen. Hmm, I was kind of thinking that, I guess this had a different ideology of maybe what happened. Because I was thinking the investigations were going on for a long, 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 long time. When's the first, when's the, I would say the first time, when's the time before the most recent civil investigations happened into Diddy? I mean, maybe that's when it started. Cat Joy, thank you so much for that amazing super sticker. You are awesome. You know, one of the things, guys, that I was thinking about in this case is that there hasn't been a whole lot of people come forward to speak on behalf of Diddy. Now, whenever he, it's his party, every celebrity in the world wants to hang out with him. When he's producing albums, every celebrity in the world wants to be a part of what Diddy's doing. However, when it involves him having a little bit of uh, bad press, I don't know, you tell me, but from my perspective, nobody wants to come out and support him. I think today, Nick Cannon came out in, in support of him, but I would hardly consider Nick Cannon you know, a trustworthy source. Where's T.D. Jakes? How come T.D. Jakes isn't speaking out on his behalf? How come Justin Bieber is not speaking out on his behalf? How come every other celebrity that has credibility that people respect and trust their voice in America is not speaking out on their behalf? So you tell me that. They want to be, some of these people want to hang out with them and be at the party. How come they're not speaking out on his behalf now? Very interesting, right? It alludes to him having guilt. He's a music mogul, but also a businessman. Sean Diddy Combs has taken center stage over the last week or so, thanks to raids by federal authorities at two of Combs' homes. As we wait news of a possible arrest and indictment as part of a trafficking investigation, we're looking into some of Combs' other ventures and his powerful connections. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Most of us likely recognize Sean Combs as a successful rapper and producer who rose to fame in the 1990s. He's gone by names like Diddy, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Brother Love. But in the last few decades, he has made his mark in many other industries, and he has earned hundreds of millions of dollars and has won over some very high-powered friends in the process. But just last week, investigators with Homeland Security raided two of Combs' homes, one in Miami, the other one in Los Angeles. They carried out bags and boxes full of items, likely things like electronics, but also possibly weapons like firearms. They said that this was in connection with a ongoing investigation, possibly into sex trafficking. Now, human trafficking more generally, 
is when you exploit someone for labor or services or commercial sex. And that's what we mean when sex trafficking. It is the recruiting, transporting, soliciting somebody for the purposes of commercial sex. It's usually through the use of fraud or force or coercion or if the person is a minor under 18 years of age. And now it is being reported that the feds are pushing ahead with the investigation, issuing subpoenas to companies that do business with Sean Combs. Some of the companies that were subpoenaed, this according to reporting from TMZ, include his private charter jet, phone providers, computer companies. It is also being reported that the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, the ones who are possibly heading up this operation, will also issue subpoenas to commercial airlines and the FAA to find out where Combs traveled, when he traveled, if he flew commercial. So it seems like investigative. Do you think he ever flew commercial? I'm going to seriously doubt that. Let me just Google. Did, did he ever fly commercial? Um, okay. It looks like in 2008, he flew commercial one time. He said the gas prices in 2008 were too high. He had to fly commercial. So all the way back to 2008 though, So I seriously doubt he spent too much time playing commercial since the only time anybody ever talked about it was in 2008. So that seems like a long time ago. By the way, guys, one of the things we do just once per show is a fun way to invite people to support us. Uh, we do something called a super sticker train. I want to invite you, if you're willing to come alongside and support us on our super sticker train. I'm not going to be able to stream for a whole hour tonight like I typically do because it is already so late tonight, uh, unfortunately. So I'm only going to be able to stream um, for about 30 more minutes. And so uh, I just want to uh, encourage you, if you're able to come alongside and support us uh, through Super Sticker or Super Chat, let's, can we go, since we have less time, you guys think we can get 12 on our Super Sticker train uh, starting not only want to know what Combs' travel routes were, but they want to know who was flying with Combs, who flew with Combs at his expense. Very similar to the way that investigators were looking into who flew on Jeffrey Epstein's private jet, the notorious sex offender, purported sex trafficker. And this will help them look for not only victims, but also witnesses who can confirm or deny some of these allegations. And that's really important because we talk so often about Maybe we should not expect potential charges against Combs right now. This could be the start of an investigation. They need more evidence before they ultimately arrest and indict him, but we will see. Now, what Combs' exact connection is to this investigation, it is unknown right now, but the Southern District of New York, we know they do not do raids like this, and even though these raids were conducted by Homeland Security in conjunction, allegedly, with the Southern District of New York, they don't do this without having something. So. There's a big deal here for this to happen. Now, we know that Combs' attorney, though, Aaron Dyer, released a statement saying in part, quote, that this was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. But to be clear, as of now, Combs has not been arrested nor criminally charged in connection with any sort of trafficking or sexual abuse. But the raids, they do come after these bombshell lawsuits were filed against Combs, accusing him of everything from sexual assault to physical abuse to drug use, having underage girls at his infamous parties. Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, filed her lawsuit back in November. Didn't the neighbor come out and say that he would actually have these underage girls pay be paid uh, to be there basically as objects for the wealthy rappers and actors and whoever was hanging out there but he would make them sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, so they could never talk about it i mean that's kind of like the word on the street right look correct me if i'm wrong i think that's what i heard amy you're amazing joanne 911 cat joy jennifer swain cat joy connie 
Patty and Cat Joy, you guys are rocking and rolling this super sticker train already tonight. Of 2023, it was explosive with pages and pages of graphic details. Combs settled the lawsuit with her the next day, but continues to deny the allegations that his ex-girlfriend made. The exact terms of the settlement are confidential. The other more recent lawsuit uh, that was filed in February by music producer Rodney Jones, known as Little Rod Jones, he made some more disturbing allegations against Combs, namely that he threatened, sexually assaulted, harassed him, even claimed the singer who had hired him to produce his latest album didn't really pay him for his work. Jones also says that in the year or so he was working with Combs, he saw drug use, the display of unregistered firearms, Combs spiking drinks for minors and sex workers, really horrific stuff. And he also claimed that Combs set it up so that actor Cuba Gooding Jr. could assault Jones on Combs' yacht, somewhere you can't really escape from. So as I keep saying, it is very possible that an arrest and indictment of Sean Combs could be coming shortly, especially if you think about what was collected at his properties, who was being interviewed, what evidence was used to support the search warrants that were ultimately signed off on to conduct these raids. There's a lot at stake. But the majority of our analysts believe that Combs will be arrested and indicted. Okay, putting that to the side, we want to do something different. We want to take a look back at some of the influence that Combs has had over the years because one of the reasons the raids came as such a shock. That's what I was wondering. Like, again, I can't name one song that Diddy ever came out with in his life, but yet he's a billionaire, which means he carries a, a ton of influence. Who, where is that influence at? Who has that influence? And by the way, today I had a confidential source that actually, uh, I don't know how much I can say, um, but somebody that's involved in Diddy's life told me this today, uh, that conveyed, I'll say this, conveyed this to me today, that the housekeeping team that Diddy had at times would be nervous to actually go in the house because they're afraid of what they would see, that there were times where there was actually what looked like doll, like baby dolls and blood all over the place and uh, it made the, and i don't know again take it or leave it you can believe it or not i don't care but I, I heard from somebody that is very trustworthy that um it reminded them of like child sacrifice stuff going on again allegedly don't know if it's true take it or leave it if it is true I wouldn't be surprised from the simple fact that some of the allegations that are being made against him currently feel very dark. And uh, from what we know about people who do dark things, they're usually involved in dark spiritual practices. Okay. So it is what it is. Ah, and that they are so big and they're be talked about so much is because think about it the influence and impact Combs has had on the entertainment industry for the past, what, 20, 30 years? As we mentioned, Combs rose to fame in the early 1990s. He founded the record label Bad Boy Records in 1993, which later became Bad Boy Entertainment. He brought on Christopher Wallace, better known as the notorious B.I.G. with him to his new label. And by the way, at its height, the label was reportedly bringing in $130 million a year. Combs himself recorded his first vocal work as a rapper in 1997 under the name Puff Daddy called Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. His first album, No Way Out, went on to win the Grammy Award for Best Rap Album. I don't know any song off of that album, personally. Although I wasn't listening to rap personally in 2007 either. So... Cat Joy with a triple whammy. Cat Joy, thank you so much. You're amazing. Uh, thank you for just inspiring so many people with your generosity and helping people uh, with your heart. And uh, like I said, a portion of everything that comes in uh, through this channel goes into our benevolence fund and helps people in need. So thank you, Cat Joy, for helping us with that. And Renee, you're so amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate your support. Those early successes helped cement Combs as a star, both in. Whitney, is that the name of the song? No money, no problems. Oh, it was called Puff Daddy. Was his name? Let me just play part of it. See if it sticks out to me.
Okay, after I played that, yeah, I, I know that song kind of. Inside and outside of the music industry. However, since Cassie's lawsuit was filed in November, Combs' radio airplay has dropped significantly. According to Billboard, Combs' big hits, which have been on rotation for years, have been played less and less, down a reported 88%. Now, as part of Bad Boy, Combs helped bring in some of the biggest names you could think of, the biggest artists, French Montana, Mace, Faith Evans, Janelle Monet, Machine Gun Kelly. In 2005, Combs and the artist Pitbull co-founded Bad Boy Latino with offices in New York and Miami. Combs is also credited on hundreds of songs for artists like Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey, LL Cool J, Jay-Z, Ice Cube, Britney Spears. But it is not just music. No. Combs has also had clear connections with the fashion industry as well. You might know that in 1998, Combs launched a clothing line called Sean John. California billionaire Ron Burkle invested $100 million into the company. Sean John became a very recognizable brand name, which pushed Combs further afield, designing Sean John-inspired wheels for cars. Combs also launched multiple fragrance lines like Unforgivable and 3AM. And talking about his business ventures, in 2015, Combs once again teamed up with Ron Burkle, as well as actor Mark Wahlberg, to buy a majority stake in Aqua Hydrate, a drink geared to athletes. Now, Combs, he was born in Harlem, has always had a strong connection to New York, and he was even given the key to the city in September 2023, right before the bombshell lawsuits. But it is not just New York that he has big connections to. No, 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 no. He also has big connections out in Hollywood. He himself starred in an adaptation of Raisin in the Sun with John Stamos. He also acted and was featured in films like Get Him to the Greek, Monsters Ball, Draft Day. He was co-executive producer on films that appeared at Sundance. He's also listed as the writer and performer for a number of songs in numerous films and shows, including most recently Fast X, Transformers, and Euphoria. You may recall that he was the judge on Making the Band. This was an ABC and MTV reality show that focused on different musical acts, including the girl group Danity Kane. And talking about that for a second, one of its members, Aubrey O'Day, she has since spoken out about Combs. O'Day was dismissed from the group with Combs saying that she wasn't the same person he signed, that fame had changed her. But on a podcast in 2022, O'Day revealed that she was fired because she, quote, wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent-wise, but in other areas. She's since come out since the raids, posting on social media, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we have endured. And then, of course, is Combs' love life. Combs has purportedly dated several A-list celebrities, including Jennifer Lopez, Cameron Diaz, and the late Kim Porter. With Is it true Jennifer Lopez is the one who snuck the gun in that killed somebody? Whom he had shared three children. By the way, his connection to Jennifer Lopez has sparked renewed interest and in whether she could be issued a subpoena now. Why do I say that? Because she is mentioned in the Jones lawsuit. Jones claimed in the lawsuit that Combs showed off his guns, that he would brag about shooting people, and that he confessed he was responsible for that infamous 1999 shooting outside of a New York City nightclub. He claims that Combs admitted that Lopez, who Combs was dating at the time, had been the one that carried the gun into the club for Combs, then passed the gun to Combs, and when he got into an altercation with someone, there were shots that were fired, three people were injured. Jones claims that Combs forced his then-artist Shine to be the fall guy, taking the blame for the shooting of several people that night. He was sentenced for 10 years in prison, by the way. So not clear if she will be subpoenaed with respect to that lawsuit, or could she be subpoenaed with respect to this criminal investigation? I don't know. We'll see. I will tell you, not everything that Combs has touched or that he's been connected to has prospered. He, at one point, had a restaurant called Justin's, named after one of his sons. There were two locations. Justin Bieber. Didn't he have a friendship with Justin Bieber, too, that we talked about the other day? Uh, Joanne Barley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every time I say your name, I feel like I'm Irish. Joanne Barley. Um, thank you. And Cat Joy, thank you so much for that. You guys, we are definitely in caboose mode. But both had been shut down. Combs has lent his name and image to marketing campaigns for Ciroc vodka after he agreed to help develop their brand 
He was paid for every case sold, which grew from 75,000 cases to 400,000 cases in just two years. But in June of 2023, new owners of Ciroc ended their partnership with Combs after he accused them of racism. Little side note about that. In their legal battle, which has settled, it was revealed that Combs purportedly made nearly a billion dollars from his participation in this liquor venture. The entertainment tycoon has also held a major equity stake in Revolt TV, a television. Okay, so he made most of his money on alcohol, on that Ciroc vodka or whatever you're saying. Okay, that makes sense now. Television network that also has a film branch. It was recently revealed that Combs had agreed to sell his stake in the network and step down as chairman in November. The move reportedly came after the horrifying allegations made against Combs in the lawsuit filed by his ex Cassie. So, of course, multiple successful businesses means lots of money, right? Combs is reportedly worth some $800 million. That's down slightly after the legal action with the new Ciroc owners. Combs was reportedly making $60 million a year just from Ciroc Vodka, which helped propel him to billionaire status in 2022. His Sean John clothing line was worth a reported $450 million when he sold it to Global Brands Group in 2016, and Combs pocketed $70 million of that. In the hip-hop world, only Jay-Z tops him on the list of richest artists. Combs' jet reportedly cost eight figures. He owns more than $1 million in jewelry and has a collection of art that includes pieces by Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. His home on Star Island in Miami is reportedly worth over $30 million, and his Los Angeles home in the wealthy Holmby Hills area is worth reportedly over $40 million. So with that kind of money and fame, sometimes things can go sideways quickly. And there is something to think about, too, when we talk about his... That's a lot of money, boys and girls. That is a lot of money his businesses and his affiliated businesses. Because aside from these businesses potentially being issued subpoenas in this criminal investigation, when you look at the lawsuits, look at who else they're aimed at. For example, in the Jones lawsuit, he listed Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, all as defendants. The theory is that they are all part of a criminal racketeering enterprise, a violation of a federal RICO statute. The companies, Jones argues, are liable for the actions of Mr. Combs, his son Justin, another named defendant, and even Combs' chief of staff, Christina Quorum, as they were employees or agents of these entities acting on their behalf, that these entities should have been monitoring or warning or supervising what these people were allegedly doing. The big theme here is that they were part of a criminal enterprise, namely making money by forcing and threatening people like Jones to transport drugs and guns, solicit minors and sex workers, and make music without properly paying them. The common purpose of this enterprise was, quote, to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers and musicians like Jones. I say all of this to explain that it's not just Diddy who is in the crosshairs, but his companies, his associates his affiliated companies. So in a massive lawsuit that could potentially result in damages, from a financial perspective, these legal actions could hurt Combs' wallet, his livelihood, and his reputation, to say the least. And also, that amount of fame and wealth and notoriety, that power, that has become a common theme in these lawsuits, that he had the wealth and the power to threaten the plaintiffs to force them into certain situations, to do certain things. From the Jones lawsuit, Jones claimed that Combs would use his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Jones. Quote, Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. There's so much drama in this world, it's actually crazy to me. The amount of drama that exists in P. Diddy's world is skyrocketing. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Kat Joy. I only have, I don't know, a few more minutes before we're going to have to end the stream, but I wanted to play a part of this clip too because uh, I really like this guy. His name's Patrick Bet David, and he's going to talk a little bit about some of these other allegations 
with Diddy. Claims Diddy's life is in danger, urges Diddy to turn himself in, okay? And I listened to this recording. I don't know if you guys did or not. He's he's doing 28 years in jail, just so you guys know Suge Knight. And Suge, Suge Knight goes all the way back in the 1995 award ceremony when he said, if, if y'all want to be part of a, you know, label that the, the owner doesn't need to be in yeah. every single video. All up in the all, video yeah. hey, at the Source Awards. Come to death row. Yeah, come, come to, to death row. Exactly. He says that, right? If you want to play the clip with what Suge Knight just said on the recording, Rob, I think you, uh, uh, yeah, if you can play just that clip right there, go for it. Been talking about the situation. Oh, Rob, we can't, can't, can't do it. Can't do it, Rob. Come okay, so anyway, so let me just read this. The, Knight said okay. he prays for Diddy's kids, but also blasted the mogul for giving up hip hop, giving hip hop a bad image. I'll tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets. Who's involved in a secret little room you guys are participating in? The 58 year old Knight said he added, "They're gonna." Get you if they can. Knight noted that he turned himself in to face his charges, and he thinks Diddy should do the same. Sometimes you got to face the music. That's most of the time. Knight said Knight also insisted that Diddy would face serious trouble if he ends up in prison. You got to make a decision when you go to prison. You're going to be standing up pissing or squatting, <laughs> sitting down pissing. Knight said before warning Diddy not to use his nickname, Brother Love, in prison. Got to yeah. give this guy some... Uh, uh, oh, my. Well, listen. Y- yeah. Uh, do you think... Uh, is there any bigger enemy, choose your enemies wisely, than Diddy has with Suge Knight? Suge Knight is the Diddy of Death Row Records. So we talked about this on, the, on previous podcast. In the 90s, the biggest beef in America was the East Coast, West Coast rap. So when Suge Knight is talking and giving friendly advice to Diddy... Just be careful where you get your counsel. He does not have the best intentions for Diddy. You got overlays on this Combs issue, right? Because it's taking on a cultural component about uh, people looking with a jaundiced eye at hip hop. It's happening more and more as this goes, and there's no direct action on Combs. Um, The first thing that bothered me about this is, why is a guy who's doing 28 years for voluntary manslaughter, and he didn't just turn himself in to do the right mm-hmm. thing, okay? Put a they noble had, cause. They had him. <laughs> why is he— After get, I killed the guy, I got arrested. I kind of turned people. myself in. Yeah, my- I don't understand why he gets a platform in prison, first of all. Like, if you want to punish the guy, shut him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're doing your 28 years for murder. Um, what are you saying, though? I'm saying that why does he get to give press statements about what's happening with Sean Combs? He's the guy should be in a box thinking about what he did for the next 20. Would you months. want to interview him? Would you want to interview? Shug oh, Knight? of course. I'm a shameless opportunist. <laughs> if I got, but I think that as a Shug, rule, if you're watching this, <laughs> as a rule, I don't know why a prisoner who did something that bad is getting that kind of access to free speech. But the idea of this becoming more about hip hop, this investigation doesn't smell right from an investigative perspective. And I'll, mm. I'll tell you why. Ordinarily, here's how it works. You start working bottom up in an investigation like this. This is essentially a RICO case. Okay. This is a racketeering case. That's what they're going to do is get him for ancillary activities that were part of what they're going to say was a criminal enterprise. You get the little guys, they start to bubble up. You now get your subpoenas out. You get your information, your your web of of networks of contacts and communications, which is a treasure trove these days because everybody's doing this all the time. Then you punctuate it with things that you now have an understanding where they might be and what they might mean, and you raid, and then you indict and or arrest. That's the way it usually works. Here, we didn't hear about a lot of these things until the raid, which may have been motivated by these civil suits, which are laid out very well, by the way, especially that little rod. It it reads like a novel. Yeah. Then there's no action on Diddy. Diddy's waving, going to Adam's friend's restaurants. He was um, in Pura Vida in Miami filming with Wes Watson this weekend. There's something, Meanwhile, his sons have been arrested. There's something off about this investigation. And what it smells like to me is that hip hop is a great boogeyman for the feds. Hip hop is bad. They don't see it as what it is now, which is my kids culture. OK, my white kids living in the Hamptons live hip hop. My daughter is going a little country on me. The songwriter, she's been writing some country, so I don't know where she gets gets that from. But I think that there are going to be some big surprises in this investigation of the nothing variety. And it's going to be a big problem for the feds. You bust a billionaire's house who's a major culture figure. 
Mm-hmm. You put his kids in cuffs. I know they thought there may be weapons in the house and that's a protocol for them. But I tell you, I don't think they would have done it to Mark Cuban's kids. And I mm-hmm. think that this is going to wind up having a nothing burger aspect. You think it. so? I'll tell you, I know that 90, 10, anybody who's been around investigations will say, no way. They would have never raided his house if they don't have him. He, look, an indictment is a probable cause standard. It's the lowest standard in our business. That's why we say you can indict a ham sandwich, right? I don't smell that they have him on the kinds of major felonies that were being teased early on, except for one component. He's got a lot of friends. No one's defending him right now. That makes me a little suspicious. Is that not what I said at the beginning of the stream? He has a lot of friends. Nobody's defending him. Where are his friends? Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not lining up right in terms of how they usually do this, Pat. Pat, I know when, I'm right. When Suge Knight is your biggest advocate, you, you got some problems. Rob, go uh, uh, while you're, I want to yeah. hear what you go to 50 cents. By the way, play that clip to see where he's at. This is Miami. Go ahead. Yeah. This is Wes Watson. Down here at show. Pira Vida by my pad. Run into the man right here. No. What's up? Miami's like that. Yeah. It's a movie. Down here okay, at go go to 50 cents Instagram, but go ahead, Minnie. So, so, so Mo, what, what what do you think about the aspect of a lot of people, and not just you know online ex people making those, you know, those videos posting, but what about the aspect of because he he looks like he's happy, he doesn't got a care in the world. The aspect of all the cameras and all the stuff that he recorded on some Epstein level stuff that they went in and the some major players at powers that be went in just to make sure all the footage of all the shit that I had with all these elites was taken out and deleted. And yeah. then he flew that plane. He well, he wasn't on it, but this jet with God knows what was on it, flew to a, a, a place, where was it? Where, Antigua? Uh, Antigua, Antigua, with this, and no extradition Antigua. to the U.S. That thing is there. Whatever's on that plane is gone. That looks like the guy to me that knows that he's good because they're like, hey, listen, with all... I mean, that's what I was saying. I think they put anything compromising on that jet in L.A. I think they flew it to, Mel, uh, to Miami, filled it with anything compromising from Miami, and they flew it to Antigua. Did you guys hear what we said at the beginning of the stream? They were paying law enforcement officers in California to keep them updated. They knew, everybody knew, the media knew, Diddy knew that there was a raid about to happen. All the shit with all the girls that are, with all the kid stuff and all that stuff, we got to go in there. We got to raid. We're going to take out anything that we seem, we deem like that can get our people in trouble and we'll get it out of here. I think that that seems more feasible to me from a person with that type of attitude that's just like, yo, what up? All love. If your kids are getting arrested and you're walking scot-free like that, something is definitely fishy. Rob, do you have that clip from uh, uh, 50 Cent? Go to the, the one to the right, top right. Yeah, watch this. Pray, press the on, go for it. Hey, yo, right now, though, for real, yo, I need to know who fucks with me, you know? Like, just straight up, like, like I don't have the time. You know, if you fuck with me, let it be known, because I'm going this next era and I'm lining up all the allies. If you fuck with me, let it be known. If you don't fuck with me, be quiet and I will take your silence. Fuck with me. With me? Yes. Are you with me or against me? Okay. Are you- Sorry for all the curse words. I don't even know what that means. If you F with me, does that mean you're, does that mean that you don't like him or you do like him? And sorry about the curse words. I didn't, I didn't know they were going to play that. I would not have played it if I had known that part, but still, I don't know what it means. I'm like perplexed. You're on my team, but, but or if you're with them, publicly are... come out, publicly yeah. come out, and be like, "Hey, whatever's happened with Diddy, um, I vote." What for I want to yeah. know is, tell me one person that supported him. I, I know. This I, guy, that picture, right? This guy. Supports guy. Him. <laughs> tell me that's one his person. No, nope, right one nobody. person that's come out that said anything that I got his back. And nobody. that is the suspicious thing. So that what does that tell us? So my yeah. reporting, uh, talking to some of these people who I thought would come out, and obviously mm-hmm. you protect them as sources. That's that's what uh, the media is supposed to do ethically. And they say, look, I don't believe that he is gay, not that that's a crime, that he is a pedophile. I don't believe it. I don't like these Bieber videos. I think they're misleading. But, Mm -hmm. but, but they all have a but and it all goes to abuse of his power and what the people around him may have been doing that he was caught up in. And that's why they're staying quiet. Now, the problem is also that you got Fitty. I keep getting yelled at for not saying his name right. 50. Is it F-I-T-T? Fitty. You're Chris Cuomo. You say what you want, Chris, buddy. Right, Chris, right. I think you start more, rapping all up in the club right now. You from, do what you want. You're from Cuomo. New York. It's 50. All right. So yeah. 50 Cent says uh, bad things about uh, Biggie, because, uh, about uh, Combs, because it's 
it's competition. Sugar is saying bad things because it's competition. That's getting covered more than the actual investigation. And that's my problem with this is there's an overlay of kind of hip hop culture going at itself. And that's a distraction from the actual case. And I really believe that I haven't seen any indication except that raid, which was I've never seen a guy of his profile get done as dirty as that raid was. Mm -hmm. You know, you get, people say Trump got raided. Trump didn't get raided. They didn't have any weapons. They didn't draw any weapons. It was done by arrangement. They spoke first. That's a raid. Oh, yeah. What they did to a billionaire named Sean Combs. It doesn't smell right to me. It doesn't Spe smell right. Did you see this clip? Did you see this clip of Mike Tyson? Yeah. And him sitting next yeah, to each other? Yeah, very weird. Can you, Rob, if you can, you know, pull up this clip. I, by the way, I just typed to Diddy Tyson. There you go. Yeah, watch this. It's a little weird. So Tyson and uh, uh, Diddy are next to each other in, in, in an interview. This is what the Keenan Keenan Ivory Wayne's is the and, whole. And back look at that a hand. Bit. Watch yeah. what Tyson does. <laughs> you know, it truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. <laughs> oh yes, he's, he's good. Put it on his lap like he's moving out the way. <laughs> well, now when we come back, we're gonna talk more with Puffy. And if you want to hang out more than welcome, stick around, my brother. Oh, All right, we'll be right back with more right after this. <laughs> Is yeah, look at him. He doesn't like his hand near him. I mean, this, is, this is probably from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, but still, he's still moving his ass away but, from his... And I, I don't know. Tyson um, was on... Was Did we talk about Diddy with Tyson? I don't... I think he kind of just... What did he say about I think he just love. skipped over that question. Oh, okay. He said, I'll love. But, by the way, where are Diddy's friends? Where's Usher? Where's Bieber? Where's Lil' Kim? Well, we, Will, he's friends with Will Smith. He's friends with, obviously, um, the whole Junior Mafia crew. Mace. DJ Khaled in Miami, these are his friends. But let me ask you what a question. What did they say? Can I you a question, though, Adam? What, what would be, not, not necessarily the benefit, what is coming out to stick up for a guy that you, at the end of the day, have no idea why was he recording everybody? Why were there cameras in every room? That's a you. There's nothing illegal about having cameras in your home. Small little cameras in every single room. Is, is that it. illegal? Cool. In your have bathroom. Cameras in your in home? your bathroom. It's in not, your home. It's not illegal based, cameras based on want. how you use the footage. But I will tell yeah. you, it's unusual to have cameras in a house as opposed to pointing outside the house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like security cameras are usually There's looking legal at, about at the perimeter. Like unusual. When, like when no. Pat, uh, you know, caught me trying to steal some of the air valve covers <laughs> off one of our cars. Yes. It was on the camera Heart outside, what, what, not in my bathroom. What? I, I fully disagree. You can have cameras in you the can. house. You, you can. About? It's unusual. By the yeah. way, we officially know Adam has cameras in every one yeah. of Yeah, I'm never going to yeah. take a crap I in your house. What the hell? Do you guys have, um, do you guys have cameras in your house? Or just cameras on the outside of your house. Oh, you That's talking about? Wait, hold on. You, no. No, hold, on, hold on a second. If you have a camera in your house, in your bathroom, hold up, and somebody's in there peeing or doing drugs or hooking up with somebody, that's legal in your own bathroom and if without you telling do them. Something with it, yes, but well, you can have cameras in your house. Well, no, if you do something with it, no, it wouldn't be legal. Correct. But in terms of wanting, you can do whatever in your house you want. But if you then put it online or something, yeah. you got to but, but, but here's my, here's or my blackmail them. But here, here's my question though: Have what you if, ever seen any reality show ever? It's cameras. Yeah, yeah but hold on, oh, that's in different. Every that's, room. Go yeah. by Florida law. So wait, wait, wait. So recording in private story. spaces without consent, such as changing rooms, bathrooms, or private yeah. homes, is illegal. So I love you, Rob. Thank you. So going to my bathrooms. point. Going to my point. What we're finding out is his house in L.A., his house in Miami, his house in New York. These cameras were everywhere. And bro, we're not just talking about you know. Cassie was there with a couple rappers. No, no, foreign dignitaries like the prince, they're saying these type of people were at this house. If they found out, oh, he's getting this is happening and there's cameras in the bathroom. You know what I was doing in that bathroom? Go go after him. Get the system, get his ass, go in there and raid it. That's what I would do if that, I was that's, of that that's, caliber. That's that could be one of five <laughs> things that you have to put on the line that could be happening right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rico sex trafficking, human trafficking, you know, retail on others, you know, rape, you know, guns. There could be a lot of different things. It's going to be going Rico after. no matter what, because that's the vehicle that they created to make it easier to get all the other stuff. Hmm. Whether they can make the case in a way where when you read the indictment, which is the best it gets for the prosecution, right? The indictment is the height of how compelling it is because you haven't really heard anything from the other side. If you don't read that and you're like, oh, wow, uh, they really have him. And they're all these people that are testifying against him who are doing the activities for him. Then my suspicion is right that this is this is sniffy. Look, this is why they always get mobsters on tax. Yep. OK, the reason they get mobsters on tax Capone. is 
And that was a different day where guys basically, you know, once in a while, Sammy the Bull and others would talk. But usually it was uh, a conspiracy of the quiet. Hip hop mm -hmm. and these new uh, things that they're doing criminally within that that sphere, they all talk. It's braggadocious at best. So racketeering influenced and corrupt organizations is just a fancy way of saying we're going to catch you for the side activities that went into the main criminal enterprise. That's how they're going to come at Puffy. It's a much lower bar for them to make the mm -hmm. case. Let's go to the, the amount story. of traffic we're getting right now with Manek is unbelievable. Yesterday, I can't even tell you how many minutes came through yesterday for me. Great conversations, people booking 15 minute calls. Tom is about to cross 2,000 minutes. Okay, he'll be the first person to have 2,000 paid minutes uh, uh, there. I know Chris uh, is probably one of the fastest to respond on Manek. I think he's a 24 hour guy at 100% response back to answer. So if you have any questions today, if you disagree with me or agree with Tom or Vinny or Adam, or Como. These are their QR codes. Ask him any question you want on Manek. There's a 95% chance you get a respond back. On Instagram, you get respond backs 5%. On LinkedIn, 5%. On Twitter, less than 10%. On Manek, there's a 90 to a 95% chance they're going to get back to you. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. All right, friends. Uh, thank you, Cat Joy. Thank you, 911 operator, for those super stickers. That's all we have time for tonight. Um, I want to pray for those of you that are watching. You've been with us now for almost an hour. Uh, can we just have a couple more minutes together and, and uh, give me an opportunity to pray for you? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless every single person that's on the stream right now. And thank you, Jesus, for your great grace. Lord, I pray that I just felt like there's some people watching right now. You've never truly known what love is from God. In fact, maybe you have anger towards God. I just feel like there's a release of that. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak the love of God over many hearts today. Um, that, Lord, you'd begin to touch people. That they would begin to experience you for the first time. And I bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I felt like the presence of the Lord was touching some of you guys on the stream today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, won't be able to stream tomorrow, but I'll be back on Thursday, and I will see you then.